Good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, this is the most hard speech since it's the last speech just before lunch. Uh, I'll give my speech in English. My name is Kwan Chang and I'm studying in Jalan Kashmiri faculty English program. And it's my fifth grade. Hopefully, in two months, I'm going to be an intern doctor there. And uh, my topic is occult isolated brain cysts of lateral plantar nerve. I was working in Mayo Clinic uh, last summer in 2016 as a research trainee, and we have recently published the data uh, which has taken its place uh, as one of the first cases in the literature. So, I'm starting first. Istanbul University is my university, as you all know, and this is my outline. Uh, first of all, I will start with what internal ganglion cysts really are, because uh, our knowledge and information and experiences are not enough with them. And uh, secondly, I'll talk about etiology and some theories beneath the etiology, and I will give some brief information about the full cut foot and ankle region's anatomy. Then I will go on our case report, then discussion and conclusion, and then I finish with conclusion, of course. So, internal ganglion cysts, they are the mucinous cysts of peripheral nerves, and the most common site of occurrence is usually peroneal nerve, but we can also see them in radial, ulnar, median, tibial, even in the suprascapular nerves. So, uh, they are not so uncommon, but actually they are so rare in foot and ankle region. So, recently reviewed, this recently published data as a systematic review has said that there are just around 50 cases of IGCs uh, in the area of foot and ankle region. So, what about the theories and etiologies? Over two centuries, their etiology has been a subject to speculation. But during the uh, past decade, most of the evidences has shown that the most important uh, process, most important theory is dynamic mechanical process. So, what is a dynamic mechanical process? There are some pressure fluxes inside the joints. And these pressure fluxes has, starts from uh, the articular branches and goes towards the parental nerves. And it causes some capsular defects. And synovial joint fluids can easily leak through these capsular defects and can cause internal ganglion cysts. So, IGC is usually follow a predetermined pathway of progression. And we had further classified this progression into some radiology phases. I will show you some diagrams that have been uh, drawn by us also with my colleagues in my clinic. Uh, so, we have further classified these phases into three phases. Phase one is ascension phase, phase two is crossing over to the other side, phase three is descension and last phase. And we have focused on phase one. Phase one is the ascension phase and we believe that it's the most important phase since it's the beginning phase. And we have further classified this phase one into four stages. Stage zero is uh, the cyst is just localized inside the uh, joint. Stage one, it goes the articular branch. Stage three, stage three, it goes the medial and lateral plantar nerves. And stage four, it reaches to the tibial nerve. So, uh, pressure on the nerve fascicles can produce neuropathic pain and also can cause some motor and sensory deficits, of course. Uh, IGCs have some obvious microscopic features that we can see them in uh, MRI and ultrasound imaging, imaging studies. And also during the surgery, it's uh, very obvious uh, to see them. But owing to uh, our experience and is not enough, our experiences and informations are not enough, uh, during the surgery or during the radiologic studies, they can easily be overlooked. So at first, we also have overlooked them, we missed them. Uh, during the surgery, we have seen some joint fluid inside the operated area, but we couldn't understand its origin. So, the, uh, one of the most important points is we, we exactly uh, we couldn't be get confused between extraneural or intraneural ganglion cysts. If we confuse between two of them, if you fail to identify the joint and ganglion connection, they recurs. And most common cause most common cause of their recurrence is failing of. Uh, identifying the joint and ganglion connection. So, uh, let's give some brief information about the anatomy. As you all know, tibial nerve's first branch is medial calcaneal branch, and uh, I'll say MC and it. And the second branch is usually lateral plantar nerve. And lateral plantar nerve usually doesn't send any articular branches to subtalar joints. But in the literature, some studies, some cadaveric studies, has said that uh, in literature, lateral plantar nerve has sent some articular branches before, but it's really rare. 
In our study, we have proven that lateral plantar nerve has sent an articular branch inside the subtalar joint. And the cyst localization, the cystic expansion's localization was right above this articular branch. And the last branch of the uh, tibial nerve is medial plantar nerve usually. So, uh, I'm starting to our case report. It's published in Journal of Foot and Ankle Surgery. And it's the first case of IGC localized to articular branch. So, let's come to our case. 46 years old, female patient, in April 2011, with a nine month of history of left medial ankle and painful pain, stabbing in nature, with associated paresthesia radiating along the plantar foot. And tinnitus sign was mildly positive, slightly positive right above the tarsal tunnel. So, uh, during the course of our routine uh, tarsal tunnel, tarsal tunnel uh, decompression surgery, we made the incidental discovery, discovery of tiny amount of cystic fluids right above the articular branch. But we couldn't easily understood that uh, where this articular branch is coming from. We couldn't understand that. And retrospectively, we could confirm the cyst and its joint connection from MRI studies. So we present this case as a first known case. So, further investigations. Uh, we have 